Hello, my name is Lacey Hale and I live in Whitesburg, Kentucky and I'm a full-time artist. Um, I do um, easel painting, murals, and block printing like I'm going to do today. So with um, block printing, um, it's a really easy way to make um, an image and um, an image that you can print over and over again. It's almost like making a stamp. So um, I like to use soft cut uh, linoleum. It's actually made out of clay. Um, and it's really malleable and um, easy to carve, and that's why I like to use this stuff. Um, this is a carving tool. Um, it has, if you open the back, it has a lot of different blades in it, um, different sizes, and it's really easy to use. Um, and then we have our inking and carving plate here. Um, it has two purposes. You can see it's a little <laughs> dirty where I've used it over and over and over again. Um, uh, some inks don't come off as easy as others, but um, uh, this is good to put your block on and carve because these are sharp <laughs> and you want to always carve away from yourself and um, toward the end of this. So it hooks on the table. And then we have our um, brayer, which we'll roll the ink on when we get done carving our piece. And then this is called a baron, and it's for pressing the paper down on our piece whenever we carve it and actually pulling a print. Um, so today I'm going to do something really um, simple for this demo. Uh, I have been um, learning more and more that it is good to rest and be kind to yourself, and so I'm going to do a print today um, about that. Um, so. Normally, I mean, you can draw directly onto your block if you want to, but normally um, if there's text that you're gonna put on something, you want it to go onto paper um, because whatever you put on the, basically you're making a mirror image so you can print it, right? So that's what we're gonna do today. So I'm going to do just um, be kind to yourself is what I'm gonna write. And so I'm drawing it on this paper first um, and it's just going to be really simple nothing big so I'm just going to draw it out and you can use a 2B pencil um, the softer the pencil the easier it will transfer uh, onto the block So I'm making the letters a little thick. You don't want to be too small, especially when you're starting out. You want to have a lot of space to carve in between. And I'm just going to make something cute. I'm going to say be kind to yourself and I'm going to make some flowers. That'll be easy to carve as well. And a little bee here, why not? A little cute bee with some wings. Maybe another flower here. So the reason I like doing block printing is because um, it is um, a really great way to get a, almost anybody making artwork um, that is pretty cool. Um, the very nature of this type of artwork um, lends itself to kind of being a little messy, a little um, um, beginner friendly because everything, basically I've, every workshop I've ever taught, people are really happy with the way um, their project turns out because it's just uh, such a cool way to make artwork. And there's um, something that's called chatter whenever you start to carve that um, lends itself to little imperfections which actually um, make the pieces even better, I think. So. I've drawn it out on the paper, and now um, this, like I said, is really soft and it's really malleable, and so it will easily accept the pencil marks. And so I've uh, measured this piece of paper to fit on my block, and now I'm going to take the back of my carving tool and I'm going to kind of burnish the image onto my block here.
you want to rub over, you can kind of see where your image is. You can use like carbon paper for this, but you don't have to buy anything really special or out of the way. Once you have the initial um, pieces that you use to carve and stuff, you don't have to have anything special. I just like doing it like this. Um, it feels a little more organic. And so you can see how um, it came off the paper and, and onto that, um, to the block. And so anything that you can't really see, you're gonna kind of fill in or make it a little bit darker. And then once you get it laid out the way you want, you're gonna start carving. So I'm going to lay it on my bench hook here and um, carve, you would carve away from yourself, but just so that it'll be easier to see probably I'm going to do it like this. And I'm going to use a little bit smaller tool. These are so handy because they keep all the tools um, in the back of the piece itself so you're not always running around and looking for the different um, carving tool sizes. So this, you have to open up the, lead, the top part here and then you can slide these right down into it and then screw it back on. That feels like it's gonna work, yeah. This might actually be a piece to another one. It's not wanting to fit exactly right, but we're gonna go with it. So, these are made to sit in your hand like this. Um, see how it's rounded at the back? So we're gonna hold it like that. Some people kind of hold it like a pencil. I wouldn't recommend, recommend that because you, you have more control if you hold it like this. Um, so then, once you um, get that, get the right tool in here, um, you're gonna start carving. And so you wanna hold it like this and kind of carve at an angle and you'll see how easy this kind of carves. And so another reason I like doing this, um, this medium is because it is kind of meditative. You can really get into the groove, <laughs> pardon the pun here, I'm making some grooves, but you can really kind of get into it and, um, and kind of lose yourself in carving pieces. Um, out and I love to put on like some good music uh, and then whenever I'm teaching classes like um, you know you can talk amongst yourselves or whatever but um, a lot of the time it goes kind of quiet whenever people are starting to carve because it, it, it does if they're really into the piece it gets pretty um, like I said meditative and you can kind of lose yourself and I think that's one thing about making art and making this kind of art is that you can kind of lose yourself and go inward and um, you know just just think and take time uh, to kind of meditate on things and so this like I said I'm doing something really simple and you can do anything I mean these come in sheets I mean you can get them huge pieces I've done some posters before for other folks and um, I've done poster size pieces for myself. Um, you can actually use these, you know, you're basically making a stamp whenever you're carving these. Um, and you'll notice I'm not carving toward myself. I'm moving the block and that way I'm not carving toward myself. I'm moving the block as I need to, to carve. Um, anything round, I'm trying to go around the curve of it and make that circle. But normally, like I said, I would be carving on this and carving toward this part. It hooks onto the table and that makes, that kind of keeps you a little bit safer. I have cut myself doing this a couple times, but um, it was well worth it. So we're gonna keep carving these out. And you'll also notice that the text, like I said, um, it's a mirror image of the, I don't know if I pointed that out earlier. It's a mirror image of what I drew. So that way you want it to, um, if you do it like this and you can transfer it from the paper onto the block, you don't have to worry about writing text backwards. Um, it just makes it a lot easier.
but you can, you don't have to only print on paper with these. Um, you can get the water-based or oil-based ink and um, print on paper, but you can also print on fabric. And so I've done several pieces that, you know, I can make my own shirts, um, you know, print patches. It's, it's a really cool medium. So here we go around the S. And so I think I've got all my text done. And so now I'm gonna do some of the flowers. And you could also do this the other way around. You could carve the whole back out and leave the text raised up. Again, think of it like making kind of like a stamp. And so whatever is left raised up is going to be what um, will print, right? The ink will hit those parts and whatever is like laying lower, it's going to um, miss those parts. And you'll see really what I'm talking about whenever I go to print this. So I might just do this one flower and then the bee, just so y'all can see what I mean. And this is, you know, I've taken, what, 10 minutes or something to work on this, if even. Um, so you can take as much time, you can be as quick as you want. It's a great way to make cards. Um, I do a lot of greeting cards, um, get well cards, thank you cards. Um, it's a great way to, to make your own little business um, too. People really like the look of block printed things, um, I've found, and so uh, it's just such a cool medium. It actually originated in China thousands of years ago. Um, in India, in India they still print fabric with block prints. Um, with blocks that are carved. And a lot of time it's wood. You can do wood, linoleum. Um, there's a great way to teach really young kids how to do this with foam and you're not cutting anything. You're actually making, like you're embossing the foam itself. Um, so that, there's a lot of different ways to kind of make a similar um, process for every age group and different things that you want to do. Okay, so I've got as much of that carved out as, as I think I'm gonna do. And now we're going to kind of get all these little, it's also very fun to clean up after this because there are pieces um, of the block that you carved, just, they just go everywhere. Um, but you wanna make sure that your inking surface is clean. And I'm gonna lay this over here, put this up so we don't lose it. So now, the way normally that you print with block printing is that you roll out your ink and um, you put the paper on the block itself. You, there, it, it just gets a better print most of the time that way. Um, you can do it the other way, more like a stamp, but this way I'll show you why, kind of with the tools that we're using, why it will make a better print overall. I'm gonna use hot pink, why not? So, you can get ink of all different colors. Um, and so this, I'm, so I put my ink on the inking plate and I've got my brayer here. And so this is to roll the ink out and roll it onto the block. And so I'm going to actually put a little bit more out here. I don't know if you can hear that sound, but that's when you know you've got enough ink on your um, inking plate. And I love these things because they're two, you have two uses, right? It's like an inking plate and the bench hook that you carve on. So these are really great um, little pieces to have around. So I've got enough ink on there. I've inked my full brayer. And now I'm gonna roll the ink across my block. Now these blocks are initially, um, this was a new block, so they get a little, um, they, they, because they're clay, they have some dust on them. 
so it's not taken the ink as well as it would if it was cleaned. I kind of washed it off, or wiped it off, but I didn't wash it. So I'm gonna put some more ink out. And I'm inking the full piece. Now you can also do, um, like if I put pink up top and blue at the bottom, you could do it, it's called a rainbow roll when you add more than one ink color to the same block. Um, there's a thing called the jigsaw method, method where you cut pieces out and you can do them in different, ink. there's a lot of different things you can do with this um, art form and I really love it. So I've got it all inked up and now I'm going to lay my paper on top. And now we have this, um, this thing's called a baron and you can get them in wood, you can use a wooden spoon, you can use all kinds of different things, your fingers, but this um, has a soft pad right here. And so it makes it easy to press down and um, it doesn't like um, crease the paper or harm the paper because of the soft pad here. And you want to make sure you get every corner and edge and kind of go around in some circles and press down relatively hard, not super hard. So hopefully these lights haven't kind of um, dried the ink up very much, but yeah, here we go. So, and there's my print I just made. So I could take this and um, like I said, if I got some fabric ink, I could make, you know, put it on shirts. Um, I could do it tote bags. Um, I could send this to friends in need of, you know, remembering, uh, being reminded of being kind to yourself. Um, so uh, yeah, this is um, one of my favorite workshops to teach. It's one of my favorite art forms to make. Um, and it's relatively easy once you have all the pieces and I've taught it to four-year-olds up to 84-year-olds. Um, and like I said, everybody is usually very happy with the product, so be kind to yourself. You know, art, art helps my mental health in um, a really big way. Um, it has always been a way um, for me to kind of process emotions and um, things that have happened in my life. Um, and uh, in 2022, when we had the flood in Eastern Kentucky, um, it really helped me get through that um, and process what had happened there because um, uh, I lost my studio in the flood and um, a lot of the work that I'd done and it took me a little while to, you know, a couple weeks to actually do any artwork, but once I started to, um, it just helped me process that event so much because, you know, I had all these feelings that I didn't know how to say or I didn't know that I could say. And um, I got this idea to do a piece. Right before the flood happened, I'd seen this blue heron fly up out of the river um, near where I live. And it was just so beautiful and I immediately went home and I did a sketch of it in my sketchbook. And I was like, I know that someday I'm going to do a piece about this. And then the flood happened and um, I applied for a residency because I just needed to get away and I knew I needed to make art to help kind of get through that. And on the way to the residency, it was in, Central Kentucky, um, I had this idea of putting a layer on the canvas of just the pile of debris that we had thrown out just from my studio and my husband's record store. And then painting that out by painting that blue heron over top of it. And um, in this really joyful, hopeful way because I started seeing, I mean, so many people helped us through that event um, and I just wanted to, I had this hope kind of, you know, brewing inside me and I knew we would get past it. And so to create a piece of artwork that um, was about that event, but also about moving past that event and leaving it kind of in the past and moving forward, um, it was really helpful for me. So, you know, if I feel down, if I 
um, feel happy, you know, um, I, I make artwork and I think that's one of the key things about creating um, and it doesn't have to be always visual, you know, but I think um, to really get in touch with yourself and your emotions and your feelings and what you have going on in your life that you can't really express um, vocally, right? Um, you can use artwork to kind of center yourself and um, really be there with yourself and give yourself that time and space to get out of your head kind of and um, make something with your hands and I think that is one of the most beneficial things that you can do um, just in general um, is, is create, take time away, take time for yourself, um, be kind to yourself and make something with your hands. Um, so, um, so creating artwork makes me feel closer to my community um, in that I, I work with the community a lot in the art that I make. Um, I think that, so one of the things that I love to do with my art is uplift the, the community in general. Um, and so a lot of, a big, a big portion of my art practice is working in communities, creating mur public murals um, where people can join in and can paint without feeling, you know, there's a lot of people that are like, oh, I can't do that. I'm afraid to do that. Um, I'm not an artist. And everybody is, you know, they have some artistic ability and they, they have that within them to, um, um, to create and be creative. And so a lot of the time whenever I am going into community and I'm creating this public piece of artwork, I make mural, I, I lay out these murals in a way that anybody can paint, no matter how they feel about it. They don't have to be confident in their artistic abilities. They can just jump in. And so um, I think that's really important just because you don't want to exclude anybody. Um, you want to make sure that everybody feels like they can help and they can create and they can um, participate. <clears throat> um, I also tend to work a lot um, with this process. Um, it's, it's called Polytab, and so it's something that I can take indoors, and, and um, we can work on tables, and it's like this material that um, you, know, you can paint on and then put up like wallpaper, and so that, I think, is a really inclusive way to create murals, and people don't have to be painting directly on a wall. Um, a lot of the time, whenever I'm doing public murals, the community has input in what the mural is going to be. So there are all these things that you can incorporate into these projects that create buy-in from the community and make them feel part of it. And I think that's really important because as an artist going into a community and working with community members, I want them to feel like they, um, they have some say and, they, and, and, and this mural is actually theirs. You know, um, I've worked, um, with schools, I've worked um, just in communities in general. You know, I've I've done murals where um, people, you know, the, the mother of a student would be like, "Please tell me which part, you know, my student worked on." And so it's it's just so important, I think, to um, to give confidence to these folks that might not otherwise get a chance to um, paint something really big and see the work that they did actually put up on a wall somewhere, you know, in their own community. Um, it's, it, I really love that work and I, I love the feeling that I get when I do it and I love um, the way communities react to pieces that they create themselves. And so it's a huge part of, like I said, my art practice. And um, I think art, you know, it can beautify spaces. It can help you process and, and um, it's important to be creative and I think in these public art pieces um, it kind of encompasses all of these um, good things that art making can do.